Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the ITX product from IBM. The topic of this video is date and time processing functions in ITX. Feel free to engage with me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In today's session, I'm going to be highlighting a few key date and time processing functions in the ITX product. I'm going to start with the simple date to text and time to text, moving on to the more complicated from date time. And then showing the conversion the other direction, I shall be using the simple text to date and text to time, followed by the more complicated to date time. I'm going to start this demonstration in the Design Studio and you can see I have a map open called Example 1. On the input side I'm reading a date time item and in the top right of the screen you can see the file that I'm reading. You can see that the format of the date time is year, month, day and then hour, minutes and seconds. On the output side I'm expecting to write an XML style uh, date and timestamp. Now because on my output side I'm using a type tree and I'm mapping to a date time item I don't have to worry about using any functions. It's a simple matter of dragging and dropping the object from the input to the output and then we save, build and run our map and then when the map completes the output is populated with the correct date and time in the new format um, and is exactly the same data as the input, just in the new format. Moving on to example two, you can see another map. Uh, in this case, we have an output object that is a text item. We're going to put a date in here, but because the item itself has no structure, no format, all the formatting of the date would have to come from the functions that you put into the, uh, into the cell there. Now I'm going to use a date to text function. It has no arguments other than feeding in a date. I could be bringing in a date object from the input, but I'm not. I'm just going to feed in the function current date for now. And as you can see, when I save, build and run this map, the output file is populated and we have May 17th, 2021. However, it is in this fixed format and there is nothing I can do about changing that format using just the date to text function. In a similar way as the previous example, the time to text function, which here I'm feeding in the current time, you have no other argument to change the output format. We're going into a text object here. The type tree is not going to determine the uh, format. So it's just the functions and the time to text function has a fixed format output. Build, run, and then on the output side we get 20, 29, 25. Moving on to the more useful from date time function, which is uh, in a sense uh, a combination of the date to text and time to text functions combined with the addition of being able to specify a date time picture string and gives the user complete control of the output format. Once again, I'm feeding the date time in as a function, current date time, rather than using an input object, but it would work exactly the same uh, if I was. Now my picture string I'm giving is in two parts, a date section and a time section. We have the standard European date format with date, month and year, and then we have a 24 hour time format with up to six digits of precision for the seconds. Now when executed on the Windows platform, uh, the Windows um, underlying operating system is only able to give up to three um, digits of precision, whereas the Linux and other Unix platforms would probably give uh, the full six. So let's build and run this map now. And you'll note in the output that we have 17th of May 2021 at 2035 and 51.152 seconds. As I said, the last three on the Windows platform um, are, are not given by the underlying operating system, and so they will always appear as 000. 
You can even completely remove those by telling the map that we want between three and three digits for the output and build and run again. And then on the output, we just get the three decimal um, that we get for seconds and the only ones that are significant anyway. Now we're going to approach the conversions from the other direction. We have a text item on input and a date time item on output. We have the stupid functions text to date and text to time. The first one I'm going to look at is text to date. And here you can see that our input is in the format of the two digits of the year, the month and then the date. And when we build and run this map, the output format is going to de be determined entirely by the properties of the output type object. If I click on that, you will see that I'm going to be writing out the dd-mm-ccyy and then a space and then the 24 hour format separated by colons for the minutes and the seconds. So if I build and run this map, you will see that I get a date and for the time we're getting 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. And the reason for this is that I'm using a text to date function. I'm grabbing the text string of six characters and all we're getting is a date. So it's got no information to populate the time. There is a second format that text to date will accept and that is a four digit year. So if we put in 2021 and save and run this map again, the output doesn't change. It still shows exactly the same, but it has accepted that format. If we try and put in a different format entirely, for example, the American date format 05-17-2021, and we build and run that map, you will note that the output becomes completely blank. The text to date function can only cope with the two formats mentioned. So that's a two digit year, month and date, or a four digit year, month and date. Moving on to the dumb text to time function. Here again, we're reading text on input. In this case, our text is one, two, three, four. And we're using the text to time function. Now the text to time function, much like the date to time function, will cope with two different formats. It will cope with HHMM or HHMMSS. So here we have just the HHMM. The output side, we have a date time object. The output is going to be entirely determined by the properties of this object. So let's bring the properties up. We're going for a, a standard date time string, DDMMCCYY, with HH24MMSS after it. However, when we build and run this map, you will note that the map finishes with a warning. One or more outputs was invalid. And if we close this warning, you will see the output that has been produced. The text to time function can actually create a time within that uh, uh, date time string, but it doesn't have enough information to create a date. And that's why we get this warning and we get this strange output here. Okay, so let's fix that. In the output card, I'm going to change this to a simple time item instead. And now I'm going to bring up the properties of that time item. So this is going to write out HHMMSS. Let's build and run that map now. The map has completed successfully. And on the output side, you see we have 12, 34 and 00, zero seconds. Now the seconds is always going to be 00, zero, even if we're in the middle of a minute because we didn't provide enough information on the input for it to even populate the output. Okay, on the input, if we change to include a seconds option and save, and we build and run our map again, the seconds do get populated in the output. However, if we try to use any other kind of time format string, like the standard colons between the items, for example, you will note that the text to time function will actually produce absolutely nothing. And there we go, completely blank. So, as I said before, text to time, bit of a dumb function, will only support two time formats. 
which is why in the next section we will be moving on to the to date time function. On to the final function in today's session and probably the one that is the most misunderstood. This is the to date time function. Now here you see on the screen a map where I'm reading from in one. In one is once again a text object. My input is currently 20210517205356, which represents the CCMMDDHHMMSS of right now. So in the second argument of my function, I put that exact date time picture string in and tell it what I'm expecting, and it will try its best to convert it. Now, what would we expect to see on output? Well, the output format is going to be entirely dependent on the date time um, properties of this object. And if I click on that now, you will see that it's going to produce dd-mm-ccyy and then a space, then the 24 hours with a colon, minutes and a colon and seconds. So let's build and run this map now. Run and you can see in output I've got my full complete date properly formatted read from a text blob and into a date item. Now that this is a date item we can use other function on it such as add hours and um, all the other date processing functions. But um, we couldn't have done any of those while it was still in a, in a text object. So let's change the input side and see what we need to do to change the picture string. Let's say, for example, that this was um, in the correct format um, with hyphens and a space and hyphens between the time as well. Rather unusual, but um, there it is. And let's say that the time coming in had some um, milliseconds included. So we'll put one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Uh, now let's go with five, five de decimal digits of precision for milliseconds. Let's save that. If I build and run my map now, we will get absolutely nothing in output because the input no longer matches the picture string that to date time is working with. And there we go, completely blank. So let's alter our date time picture string to match what we're actually receiving. So we've got hyphen between the CCYY and the MM, a hyphen between the MM and DD. Going to have to put in a couple of squiggly brackets to represent the space in between the two objects now. Some hyphens between the hours and minutes and seconds. And finally, we're going to tell it that we want between five and five decimal precision digits for seconds. So there's my completed picture string. Build run. And on output, we get exactly the same format that we got before, because that's defined by the properties of the object. But the two date time function has done its business and correctly brought in the date time that we had before. You'll note that the one, two, three, four, five um, decimal parts of the second are completely missed, but they are still part of that object, even though they're not displayed. Now it's important to remember that because if you add half a second onto this and then put it into another object that's got these same properties, this might then show as 57 seconds as it rounds up because of the half a second added on. So how do we get these date time picture strings? There's a little tip for you to be able to um, work them out quite easily. If we open our type tree, and I'm going to open the one that we've just used, which is output.mtt. If we look at this date time item and uh, bring up the properties, we have a picker button over here on the right hand side and we can go through the um, dialog boxes to build up our date time string. So we notice our date is in a custom format. I pick the three dotted button and it's dd-mm-ccyy. These boxes are not ticked because if I tick those that means that this section becomes optional, this entire section at the end here. And this is not ticked because if it was ticked, it would mean that this section within the previous data was also optional. And you've got an extra section in a, in a date picture string if you want to have additional information such as the quarter number or the, um, 
three three digit representation of the uh, day or date so coming out of date then and into time we have a very similar pick a button here where we can um, go for custom and click on the three dotted button and we can build up our picture string to be exactly what we need maybe we don't want um, ha24 colon mm maybe we want hyphens um, maybe the seconds are going to include a fractional of minimum and a maximum of six minimum of three maximum of six digits and at the end of it we're going to put whether it's am or pm which you wouldn't do with 24 hours so I'm just going to change that to 12 and finally we've got the time zone picture here that we can put in either the time zone or the time zone offset information now once we've built up a picture of what we think we want to see we can then see that represented down here as a string and this exact string can be copied to the clipboard and put back into our map as the date time picture string in our to date time function so you can build it with the picker and then you can just cut and paste it from the type designer into your functions so that you don't get the uh, format in any way incorrect so there you go a little trick for building up the picture strings I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to engage with me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.